Okay, what are some of the stuff you'd need to know on programming languages for your exam? Well, you will already know about binary. The binary language is made up of ones and zeros, and only ones or zeros. And binary was the first generation of programming language, also known as machine code. And it was called machine code because we can program machines with it. And one machine that we could program with it is the CPU, the processor. And um, a processor will only understand binary, ones and zeros. So whatever generation of programming language we write something in, it has to be translated into binary anyway. But more on that in a moment. The second generation of programming languages used monomics, or as we might know them, abbreviations. If we look at the picture over there on the left, we have series of um, characters and numbers joined together. So we've got B265 here. And what B265 will do is translate into a series of binary digits that will do something to the CPU. And another name for the monomics abbreviations is assembly code. Still has to be translated into ones and zeros before it can do anything with a processor, though. Easier to program than binary. Easier to remember an abbreviation rather than a really long series of ones and zeros. What we're more used to programming in is something like statements, which is much more like English, so even easier. This is the third generation of programming language, a high level of programming language. So, for instance, we've got an if then else statement here. Sorry, it wasn't known as assembly code, uh, third generation program language, it's known as high level language. Um, and again, um, it has to be translated into ones and zeros binary before it can operate on processors. But one of the advantages of a high level programming language is that it would be able to um, operate any type of processor, Intel, AMD, any other types, and all models. Whereas with our other um, earlier generations of programming language, they could only um, operate a particular type of CPU. So this language was more general, more generic, more universal. This table sort of says it all. Um, third generation programming languages are independent of hardware, very portable, whereas the earlier two generations were processor specific. Um, and the closer you get down the diagram, the closer you get to the hardware. But remember that a third generation language or a second generation language has to be translated into binary before it can operate the processor. How it does this? Well, if it's an assembly code language to the second generation, it uses what is called an assembler. If it's a high level language, a third generation, like our VBs or any other modern uh, programming languages, it uses either a compiler or an interpreter. Now you need to know these three terms for the exam, compiler, interpreter and assembler. Remember assembler is for change, translating assembly code into machine code and it's either a compiler or an interpreter for translating high level languages into machine code. One of the things you might get asked about more than anything is the difference between a compiler and an interpreter. Compilers are where code is compiled into an exe file. We'll be very used to clicking on exe files and there's an example that an exe file is also known as object code. An interpreter is where we're actually in the IDE, the integrated development environment, we're actually developing our code, we're making our code and we'll click on run and start. That is interpreting the code. Code is interpreted, executed one line at a time. Compilers run code very fast, interpreters run code very very slow So, in comparison. So the compiler uh, has an advantage there over the interpreter. Another advantage for the compiler is that people can't see your code. Unless you're a really good hacker, I wouldn't be able to see the code that made notepad.exe for instance. In an interpreter, people can see your code and that's because it's used in the development environment. Compilers are used for software that needs to be distributed or sold. 
there are hundreds, thousands of different programming languages. A few ones that are good to be familiar with are all these third generation, high level programming languages, some of which you might have used. Um, and the bottom three there are historical ones, still third generation languages, but some of the earlier ones from the history of computer science.